Welcome back to Rudy's Rant on Come On Now, the podcast. I am Rudy Rodriguez Shomont, your ranter in charge tonight. I want to hit on a topic that just recently came across the screen. Um, it was about the NFL Combine, and if people weren't paying attention, the Combine took place last week, and we saw some amazing 40 times and you know performers and workouts where People who can't play football that well can become stars, even if they're not that good. It's happened before, and apparently it's happening again. And this time, the newest um, beneficiary of the workout warrior is uh, Michigan's J.J. McCarthy. Now, J.J. McCarthy did just win a national championship. Congratulations to J.J. McCarthy. But... Let's be real. Was J.J. McCarthy the reason Michigan won the national championship? The answer is hell no. And it's gotten really, really tiresome listening to the white quarterback privilege that goes on almost every single year when it comes down to underperforming quarterbacks in college that all of a sudden become top shelf prospects because ESPN pundits and other organization pundits push the narrative that these players are so good. First, let's look back at some of these white privilege quarterbacks over the past few years. The one that pops up immediately, obviously, is Mitchell Trubisky. He was the second pick in the draft. He was picked in front of people like Patrick Mahomes and Deshaun Watson. And why exactly? Because it wasn't because he was all that good in college. I'm a Miami Hurricanes fan. I saw him play for North Carolina enough. He wasn't that good. And it's really frustrating seeing this on a year-to-year basis, watching these pundits on ESPN push a narrative. In this case, it's former Jets and Dolphins general manager Mike Tenenbaum. He had some level of audacity to sit here and say, yeah, Someone is going to try to move up with the Chargers at five to get in front of the Giants at six. Tannenbaum said in uh, Get Up, we can talk about wins being a quarterback statistic, but I fell in love with J.J. McCarthy in 2022 when he's down two points against Illinois at home, and it was a freezing cold day. He went down and got the game-winning field goal with his feet with passing, drawing pass interference. He is a winner. He can make all the throws. And what's really interesting to me, Greeny, is if he played for LSU, what would his stats look like? They'd look a lot closer to Jaden Daniels. If Jaden Daniels was at Michigan, his stats would look a lot closer to J.J. McCarthy. And that's where this debate is so much fun and so interesting. But he can do everything. Like the workout shows, he can make every throw with great anticipation and really good arm strength. Excuse me. Get the fuck out of here, Mike Tenenbaum. You just told us that he can make all the throws in a workout. Guess what? If you can't make throws in a workout, you have no business playing quarterback, number one. You're playing against air. So he made throws against air. Who cares? You cannot be serious. This is why you were a failure as a general manager. You picked QBs based on if they can throw against air? You fucking twat. You serious? You pick QBs based on throwing against air in workouts against nobody. I pick QBs based on what they do on the field. You want to know who got overlooked for another white quarterback? Lamar Jackson got overlooked for another white quarterback who got white quarterback privilege in the draft because he'd been pushed by guys like you and Mel Kuyper and all the other pundits who run their mouths about XYZ. It's more like they want to be right, then they want to actually pick the right player. Because a narrative on these players is pushed by media. Because there's no way in fucking hell a professional general manager and president of a football team in the NFL looked at J.J. McCarthy and said, that's our guy. There's no way. That guy, that QB, yes, he won a national championship. And yes, over the last two years, he was 28-1 and as a starting quarterback. You know who his running back was? It was Blake Corum. 
Blake Corum was a monster. You know who he had? His offensive line was loaded. His defenses were fabulous. He was the last reason that Michigan won. He was the least important part of that fucking cog. You could have planted, if Jalen Milrow from Alabama played for Michigan, Jalen Milrow was the national champion. Because Michigan as a team was the best team in the country. They were better than Georgia. They were better than Bama. They were better than everybody. And you're going to sit here on a guy who threw for over 200 yards one time in the last six games of the season, over two seasons, threw for 300 yards three times, over 28 games? Over 28 games, this is the quarterback you want to pick in the top 10? And you say that if he was at LSU, he would have done what Jaden Daniels did? Are you high? Jaden Daniels is a stud. Jaden Daniels is way better than J.J. McCarthy. If you put Jaden Daniels at Michigan, Michigan would have been beating people 60 to nothing every week. Instead, he needed to put up 50 just for his team to be in games because the LSU defense was so damn bad. This isn't about game plan or anything like that because when you have a superstar quarterback, you know what you do? You change your offense for that quarterback. The Miami Dolphins, for many, many years before Dan Marino, they were a running team. Don Shula ran the ball. The 70s Dolphins ran the ball. Dan Marino shows up. You know what Don Shula did? Here's the running, here's the running playbook. That's the running, running playbook. We throw the ball. We have a gunslinger at quarterback. You throw the ball when you have a gunslinger at quarterback. I'm not saying that Michigan wouldn't have run the ball still. Hell, Blake Corr may have had more yards because he would have had a much easier time running the ball because he would have had a quarterback that could actually throw the ball. Did you actually watch the college football playoffs where literally every other pass that McCarthy threw was a swing pass? That's what you're telling me is a guy that who's now in some mock drafts selected as high as fourth? Where you have guys like Michael Penix who were unbelievable and Bo Nix who were unbelievable and they're in the second round? J.J. McCarthy's not better than Michael Penix. My eyes told me that. Not some fucking NFL combine workout or some pro day. What is going on here where we let pro days and workout combines dictate who can play football? Zach Thomas was a fifth-round pick in the NFL draft. He's in the Hall of Fame, and he didn't get selected higher because he was 5'10". But if you watched football, you knew that guy was a motherfucker on the field. Ray Lewis was undersized coming at the University of Miami. He was picked late in the first round. He's arguably the greatest middle linebacker in NFL history. And 2025 teams overlooked him because he wasn't big enough in their opinion. Did they watch him play? This is the type of bullcrap that drives me crazy. Because it seems like these GMs and these presidents overthink everything and think they can actually create something that doesn't exist. I'll give you an example. Baker Mayfield was a great college quarterback. I have no argument with drafting him number one. Zero. He was a Heisman Trophy winner. He was a great college quarterback. He performed. And he hasn't been a bad NFL quarterback, re realistically. Josh Allen was picked number seven. Josh Allen's been a, become a really good NFL quarterback, no question about it. And you know what? He was picked 24 spots ahead of Lamar Jackson, who'd won a Heisman Trophy at Louisville. Lamar Jackson, I think, has proven that he's a hell of a damn quarterback. Unfortunately for him, he hasn't gotten to a Super Bowl yet. And maybe he never will. I don't know. But neither has Josh Allen. And you're picking a guy who played at Wyoming and was completing 55% of his passes ahead of a guy who, was, who was, did everything for his team and performed? And this is the problem. In that case, yes, it worked out that Josh Allen's become really goddamn good. But Lamar Jackson, if you redrafted that whole class, is the number one pick in that draft. If you redrafted that class today, the number one pick in that draft is Lamar Jackson, period. I watched Daniel Jones get Pushed, in the, pushed into the sky as to how great he was. He was at Duke for three years and was garbage for three years. And yet, magically, the New York Giants select him number six. Mind you, there weren't many quarterbacks in that draft class, so that's why he benefited from that. 
But that wasn't a number, a first round pick or a number six pick in the draft. He's a third round pick, fourth round pick. But media keeps pushing a narrative on these white quarterbacks and makes them sound like they're fucking great. It's exhausting. J.J. McCarthy was mediocre at Michigan. Flat, mediocre. I don't care what it is in a workout. I don't care. I care about what it is on a field. And the offense that Michigan ran was run the way it was run because he couldn't do the things needed to be done to run a different type of offense because great coaches adjust to their talent. They always have and they always will. Even Bill Belichick, when Tom Brady came into the league and started playing for the Patriots, initially they ran the ball. It was run the ball, defense, game management. By year five or six in 2007 when Randy Moss showed up, air that motherfucker out. When he believed that Tom Brady was the guy, guess what? Tom Brady is, and this is my you, after three Super Bowl wins, Tom Brady's airing it out now. This is what it is as a quarterback. Let's let's be real. Let's 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 not lie to ourselves. I'm sick and tired of this freaking privilege being being stowed upon white quarterbacks who don't deserve it. But yet a black quarterback with the same type of situation as this one right here with JJ McCarthy doesn't get that same privilege? How is Michael Penix behind McCarthy? Michael Penix was 10 times the quarterback that JJ McCarthy was is it's not even close did your eyes not see that michigan won the national championship 34 to 13 granted was that because of jj mccarthy let's be real because we know how close that game was in the fourth quarter and a pick went back and the defense for michigan made plays and that's what won them the game it wasn't J.J. McCarthy. The number one option on the Michigan offense is Blake Corum. For two, you know, this year, for sure. I think he missed the game last year against uh, TCU. I think he did. I'm not sure. If I'm, if I'm incorrect, forgive me. But you, this is becoming a year-round thing where, the, the I mean, right now, you've got on four different mock drafts, you have him as a number four pick, a number six pick, a number eight pick and a number 11 pick for a guy that threw for less than 200 yards a game for his entire career in college. He averaged 194 yards a game as a sophomore and 199 games per 109 yard, yeah, 199 yards per game as a, as a junior. Or was he a, was he a junior and senior? I don't know. And I don't, I know he had another year. He could have come back, but this is the guy that you're sitting here saying a top 10 pick, top five pick. He didn't average 200 yards passing in a pass-happy game. Every team, even Nick Saban adjusted his offenses from running the ball to passing the ball when he got quarterbacks that could throw the ball. He adjusted. So you're telling me Jim Harbaugh couldn't? No, he played with what he had. A monster line, a great running game, and a beast of a defense. His quarterback just had to manage the game. As Cam Newton says, J.J. McCarthy, that's a game manager, throwing swing passes left and right. Let's not act like his throw to Blake Corum was some amazing throw. It was a swing pass that went for 25 yards, in the, in the, in the, I think it was against Alabama. The swing pass. It wasn't a great, it's an amazing throw. Let's stop overhyping these guys because they're freaking light. White. Because Patrick Mahomes is the best quarterback in the world right now. And he was picked behind Mitchell Trubisky. And nothing, nothing from college would have told you that Mitchell Trubisky was a better prospect than Patrick Mahomes. Nothing. Patrick Mahomes threw for 700 yards in one game in college. It wasn't his fault his team had no defense. He threw for 700, and that was against Oklahoma when Baker Mayfield was opposite him and threw for 500 plus enough already Mike Tenenbaum you're a fucking idiot and I and, and the thing is I think you believe this shit you're not just saying it to get some clicks and likes and views I think you believe this shit because your teams have sucked when you were the GM I'm a Dolphins fan I had to endure your ass for multiple years of garbage 
So spare me the bullshit. I I I, I gotta check. Did he actually draft uh, Ryan Tannehill? I don't remember. I don't know who. I don't remember who drafted Ryan Tannehill. Quite frankly, but that was an example of a. That's an example. Ryan Tannehill is an example of this type of bullshit, because Ryan Tannehill had no business being the eighth pick in the draft when he was a fucking converted wide receiver, and I think he played one year of football or two years of football as a quarterback and was just average. Enough already. You cannot fix guys. Guys can get better, but you cannot fix and change what guys are. Tom Brady at Michigan was a dog. He was a dog. He was a damn good player. But guess what? His measurables weren't enough because he ran too slow because he had a flabby looking body and all that other crap. It's becoming ridiculous. Every single year, there's some new great white hope who's coming to save the day for some team in the top 10. Last year, it was Will Levis out of Kentucky. Thankfully, the NFL teams did not bite on that bullshit on this mediocre quarterback out of Kentucky, who, again, was mediocre. He had, I think, 2,500 yards passing. I mean, are you kidding? He went in the second round. But for a good minute, there were projections of him going in the top 10, 15. Which means, you know who's pushing this? This is all media-driven bullshit. They want to find someone to prop up. It's tiresome. 200 yards a game in college? And this is the guy that you want to pick in the top 10 because some dope fucking, some dope GM who's on ESPN, who has no business being on ESPN to begin with, is sitting here saying he can make all the throws in a workout? I can make throws in a workout. I can't make them in a game. Obviously, I'm being extra right there about making throws in a workout. I'm not a quarterback. But any quarterback can make throws in a workout. And the game you fell in love with him on was a game that they won 1917 over Illinois at home when they're a three-touchdown favorite? That's the game you fell in love with? The game that they won on the last second field goal because of him? Because they were down because of him? To a bad Illinois team? That's the guy? That's the game? you got to be shitting me. Enough already. When will we stop with this? It's tiresome. Let a black quarterback have a bad day. He drops 20 spots in the fucking... He drops 20 spots in in a mock draft. Let a a white QB throw three good balls. He's a top 10 pick. The only black QB I've seen propped up like this is Trey Lance. The only one over the last decade. The only black QB I've seen propped up like this is Trey Lance. Because you could have told me for shit that a guy at North Dakota State who played 15 games was a top five pick. But he ended up being that, and it's it completely backfired for San Francisco. Because, again, media propped this shit up. But that's the only black QB that I've seen in the last decade who was propped up the way we, not we, but the media, ESPN, CBS, ABC, whoever the hell, with these damn mock drafts, props up these fucking white, great white hope quarterbacks. I'm sick of it. Enough already. Be sure to like yeah, like, comment, subscribe. I hope you liked what you had to listen to. I'd love to hear your feedback. Leave your comments. And let's see what you got to say. Come on now.